You're watching ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to stay in the universe of Kaiju and we're going to talk about Pacific Rim Uprising, the upcoming sequel to Pacific Rim, and slated to come out in uh, February of next year. And what do we know so far? Well, you guys probably know more than I do since I'm just getting back into the video game. Right. Well, you know what I meant. The video creating game. And um, very interesting. You know, I'm looking at the cast and we got uh, John Boyega, you know, who is coming off the very successful The Force Awakens and obviously will be in uh, episode eight later on this year. And he's actually playing the son of Stacker Pentecost. And... I, I thought that was interesting because, you know, one of the when we leave Pacific Rim, we see that, you know, they seem to have closed the breach. But obviously, that's not the case. If we're getting Pacific Rim 2. There must be another breach open. But what's interesting is it, I guess the question I'm wondering about is whether or not it happened directly after or sometime shortly after they they thought they closed it. And. Is he now part of what's been going on for about 20 years, another war? Or is life normal, things are good, and suddenly the kaijus rise up again, and he decides to go into action, and obviously in place of his father, who died in the first movie, and take action. So it's obviously the movie's going to take place at least 20, 25 years down the road from the first one. So that's going to be interesting because we're also going to learn the um what happened to charlie hunman's character because he's not in this movie but mako is so it could be that th there was a fight uh, it did open up again shortly after the first movie and mako and riley were fighting this whole time and maybe in one particular fight riley died and mako ever since either she's been like a coach kind of like stacker or she had another partner which i doubt um, so that'll be interesting to see how that all plays out, you know, because again, if he's playing his, if he's playing Stacker's son and you figure, you know, he's at least in his mid twenties. So you're looking at like 25 years after the first movie. I thought that was going to be, I think that's going to be pretty cool, you know, to see, to see where things have gone since then. What does the world look like? You know, because when we saw the first movie, the world was, you know, they seem to have at some point had a control over the kaiju invasions they had you know the uh, the jaegers who once uh, kaiju would breach they take action immediately prevent the jaegers from even uh infiltrating cities but then we saw that as the movie progressed kaijus were coming out in more and more abundance they were getting stronger uh we learned towards the end of the movie why and things were pretty much in shambles walls were torn down uh, china in particular was beat up pretty bad so it's going to be interesting to see that if at some point they came back before um, Boyega's character is old enough to get into a Jaeger, then you're looking at possibly five, ten years after the first movie, they came back and they've been fighting him for another 10 or 15 years. So interesting, interesting stuff right there. And we also have some other returning characters. Uh, Bern Gorman's coming back as Professor Gottlieb. Uh, and I like Ben Gorman, uh, Bern, uh, excuse me. Burn Gorman, I say Ben Burn, but his name's Burn Gorman, and I like him. He's a good actor. Uh, obviously, he's been in uh, uh, Nolan's Batman movies. Uh, he had a small role in Game of Thrones where he played like uh, the some thug, you know, and and he's very skilled with daggers and nearly killed Jon Snow. So, um, so yeah, so that's good that he's coming back, and we also have coming back Charlie Day playing um, Doctor Gottlieb, I believe his name was. I think it was Gottlieb. So so that's good. So we're going to have some familiar faces coming back, um, as well as some new faces. Uh, John Boyega obviously leading the way. And I think this movie is going to do a lot better than the first one. I, I think I think there will be some improvements. Uh, you know, obviously John Boyega is a good, a good uh, casting. You know, bringing him in is good. And bringing back some returning characters to keep the continuity and stuff like that. So I think, I think they're going to be in decent shape. Uh, we also have Scott Eastwood that's going to be in the movie. So uh, I, I think the cast is decent. I think the idea of the story taking place sometime down the road is pretty good. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go. 
Uh, we also going to get some new Jaegers. Uh, I have a picture here. It's more like a painting. I'll pull it up real quick. And, um, you know, you see the center one. You see that it looks very much like Gypsy Danger. Obviously, the design is very similar. There are some minor detail differences, but it looks like Gypsy Danger is going to be rebuilt. Uh, makes sense. You know, that was uh, Raleigh and uh, Mako's Jaeger. And, uh, again, I have a feeling there's a story that goes into play where they were fighting, constantly fighting kaiju that were coming in through a new breach. And um, he probably died. He probably passed away. And then we see the other two Jaegers back there. And, and, of course, I don't recall seeing them in the first movie, so they're pretty new. But you can tell by looking at the design, very similar in in theme and very similar to the first movie. Uh, obviously taking some uh, inspiring cues from some of the Jaegers from the first movie. So uh, so it looks pretty good. You know, I think I think Pacific Rim is going to – I think this movie is going to do better this time domestically. Uh, I think it has to if it, wanna, if it wants to continue on. I think they they took a gamble making the sequel. Uh, Guillermo del Toro is very passionate about this project, and he has a lot of love for it. And I'm sure he pushed the issue. And, you know, Guillermo del Toro is a, a director you want to trust. And I, I think he deserves a second shot, and he got it. Now, obviously, he's not directing, but he's still very much involved in creating the movie and producing it and things of that nature. So I think that um, I think it's a good thing. And, and you know, a lot of people, one thing I want to mention, uh, get into right now before I end this video, is a lot of people are still asking the question as to whether or not this movie will ever coincide with what's going on with the Godzilla universe or the monster universe. And I will say this, if there is ever going to be a connection, if they're going to try and link the movies, uh, you're going to see, if they do it, you're going to see an Easter egg or some, some sort of link or end credit scene or whatever in this Pacific Rim movie. You're going to see it happen in this movie. I, I'm six to one, half a dozen to the other on it. I'm 50 50. I think there's a strong chance in one, on one hand, because now, of course, it's Universal. It's not Warner Brothers. Universal is also with the Godzilla and King Kong and stuff like that. Uh, the second thing is that recently, for those of you who don't know, they did announce that they, they opened up a huge writer's panel for the Monster Universe in particular. We're going to have, have a video about that, speculating on what kind of projects they might come up with. And, and those two are very strong possibilities that they might try to link it up somehow. The part of me that thinks they won't is there's so much going on right now leading into the Godzilla universe that bringing in Pacific Rim right now is very unlikely. You know, uh, it's one thing to you're introducing these three new monsters in the next couple of movies, along with Kong versus Godzilla, which I personally think will be a one-on-one -on -one showdown. I don't know if we'll have any other monsters in that movie. Uh, I know we've all been speculating that Ghidorah might be the end result of that movie for them to team up so that there's never a definitive answer as to who the winner is. But I have a feeling they'll give us a definitive answer. I just don't think it'll be an answer we like. <laughs> but I'll do that in another video that I have planned. Um, so I would say if you don't see an Easter egg in Pacific Rim Uprising or an end credit scene that involves a Monarch logo or anything involving the Godzilla universe, then I would say that Pacific Rim is going to be its own entity. Uh, but again, I'm 50-50. I, I, I see good reasons on both ends for it to happen and for it not to happen. I know continuity is a big issue. We've all discussed that. But um, that's something that can be rectified quite easily with creative writing. And furthermore, as I've said before, and I know I've repeated this, but you know, we've had movies that have had continuity issues that have been more than successful. Uh, case in point is X-Men Days of Future Past. So we'll have to see. We'll find out next February, you know, a less than a year away. It'll be exciting to see all these characters back as well as the new cast and to see giant monsters, of course, fighting it out with other giant, well, robots. And uh, I'm excited. I can't wait for the for the first uh, trailer, which I'm sure we'll see sometime this summer if not towards the end of the year. But if it's coming out in February, I'm betting we will see something around August, September. Uh, they'll definitely release something at Comic-Con. Whether or not we get to see it remains to be seen. But I, I would say by August, September, we will start seeing trailers uh, for Pacific Rim Uprising since it's coming out so early next year. And I think it's a perfect slot for the movie. I think February is a good opportunity for it to make a good domestic pull. It'll do well internationally. 
and bringing in John Boyega, fresh off of the two Star Wars movies and getting him uh, recognition, as well as bringing back familiar characters from the first movie for those who did see it. I think it's got a lot of things working in its favor, so I think it's going to do pretty good. So, But until then, let me know how you feel about Pacific Rim Uprising. Are you excited? Are you not excited? Do you not give a shit? <laughs> and let me know in the comments below, and I will see you next time. This is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. You can follow ETN on Facebook, Twitch, or Twitter, or join the Nation Facebook page. Don't forget to click that subscribe button on your way out.